This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Are we seeing the first cracks in the Chinese auto industry? A dramatic slowdown in sales last month, coupled with a raging price war, seems to be crippling a couple of the weaker automakers. The luxury car maker Hi-Fi stopped building cars last week. Hi-Fi says it's merely pausing production for six months, but the employees who remain will take a 30% pay cut and after March 18th, they'll be paid minimum wage. And another car company, Netta Auto, is delaying bonus payments to employees. That sure sounds to us like the two companies have severe cash flow problems. But while some of the smaller Chinese car companies look like they're starting to flounder, BYD continues to expand. The biggest car company in China is now jumping into the two-wheel market. But it's not going to make e-scooters or motorcycles. Instead, it will make batteries for them. BYD currently makes batteries for cars and stationary storage, and it's the second largest EV battery maker in the world with a nearly 16% share of the market. Adding the two-wheel market to its portfolio is only going to help BYD achieve even greater manufacturing scale. And that's not the only new market that BYD is expanding into. It's now going to compete in the luxury segment in Europe with its Yang Wang brand. It just unveiled the U8 SUV at the Geneva Motor Show, which will compete with high-end SUVs like the Mercedes G-Wagon. The U8 is an extended range electric vehicle. Its two liter turbo engine charges the battery and does not drive the wheels. It also features a roughly 49 kilowatt hour LFP battery pack and four electric motors that each have 220 kilowatts of power or nearly 300 horsepower. The SUV has a combined range of 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles and in China, It has a starting price of $150,000. And over the weekend, Yang Wang also unveiled its second model, the U9, which is a high-performance electric car that can compete with Ferrari and Lamborghini. It can move from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.36 seconds and has a top speed of 309 kilometers an hour or 192 miles an hour. The model has a starting price of more than $233,000, and it will only be sold in China. It goes into production in the second quarter, and deliveries will start in the middle of the year. A lobbying group called the Alliance for American Manufacturing is urging the U.S. Congress to block imports of Chinese cars made in Mexico. In fact, it's calling those imports a, quote, extinction-level event for the American auto industry. But what we're trying to find out is, who is the Alliance for American Manufacturing? It claims that some leading manufacturing companies are members, but we can't find any info on who its members are, except for the United Steelworkers Union. We've reached out to the Alliance and hope to learn more about it, and when we know more, we'll report on what we found. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Toyota is practically giving away the Mirai in the U.S. The automaker is offering a $40,000 sales incentive for the fuel cell powered model which drops its price to just 12 grand. Toyota is offering the discount because Shell recently announced it's closing seven hydrogen stations in California, and the Mirai is only sold in California. And Wards reports there's only two dozen left in dealer inventory. Toyota also offers a complimentary $15,000 credit for hydrogen fuel that's good for six years, so you can pretty much drive for free during those years with the discount. Well if you can find a place to fill up now, that is. EV startup Lucid is planning to open an R&D center in the Detroit area. According to Crane's Detroit Business, the company will invest $10 million and will create 260 jobs. Lucid is seeking state incentives for the project, and representatives from the company are traveling to Michigan tomorrow to speak with public officials. Lucid is based in California, 
and we find it interesting that it chose to open an R&D center in Detroit and not Silicon Valley. It seems like every automaker is developing an affordable electric car, and this is what Renault plans on introducing to the European market early next year, the all-new Renault 5. Its styling stays very true to the concept, which itself takes inspiration from the original version that debuted in 1972. The platform for the car was developed by Renault's new EV and software division, Ampere, who completed it in three years instead of the usual four. The platform is called Amp R Small, and it's dedicated to B-segment sized EVs. It's a connected platform that offers technology like Google built-in, bi-directional charging, OTAs, and up to level two autonomous driving. One electric motor that comes in outputs of 70, 90, and 110 kilowatts is available, which is 93, 120, and 147 horsepower. The new Renault 5 will come with an up to 52 kilowatt hour battery pack that provides up to 400 kilometers or about 248 miles of range on the WLTP test cycle. Renault says it will even be able to tow up to 500 kilograms or just over 1,100 pounds. The interior is pretty simple without a lot of clutter, but there's a modern touch with digital screens and we like the use of fabrics as well as the similar styling of interior and exterior air vents. The new Renault 5 is expected to go on sale early next year with a starting price that's said to be around 25,000 euros. Jeep is abandoning its plan to create Wagoneer as a separate brand. When the current Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer debuted three years ago, they didn't have any Jeep logos or branding on them. The plan was to create a new, more upscale brand within the Jeep family, but it didn't work out. So now it's bringing the Wagoneer brand name back into the fold. In the second half of this year, Jeep will come out with the Wagoneer S, an electric crossover built on the Stella Large platform with 600 horsepower and a zero to 60 time under three seconds. It will have Jeep logos on it and they hope to sell 10,000 of them. Antonio Filosa, the new global CEO of Jeep, is launching a flurry of initiatives to energize the brand, which has been losing sales and market share. He brought in a new management team, is boosting advertising, cutting prices, adding content, focusing more heavily on product quality, and is streamlining dealer programs. Those price cuts cover 90% of Jeep's lineup. The Compass gets a $2,500 price cut, which brings the base price under $26,000. The Grand Cherokee gets a $4,000 price cut. The Wrangler gets $3,000 worth of equipment made standard, and the Gladiator gets that plus a $1,700 price cut. Filosa is also going to expand the product line with more models. In addition to the Wagoneer S, Jeep is coming out with a model called the Recon EV that looks to be about the size of a Ford Bronco. Filosa says the new model will take Jeep from 60% market coverage in the SUV segment to 85%. Fiat is showing off a new lineup of concepts that hint at its future. The family of vehicles are inspired by the Panda, although they are a bit larger. They're all built on the same platform. Some models will share up to 80% of their parts, and they can accommodate ICE strong hybrid or pure electric powertrains. The models will be offered in Europe, South America, the Middle East, and Africa, and Fiat says it thinks it can be successful with a pickup in Europe as well. More production intent versions will be shown starting this year, and then every year until 2027. But Fiat isn't saying when they'll go on sale yet. NEO has a new intern on the production line. It's testing out a humanoid robot from a Chinese robotics company called UbiTech. They showed how the robot called Walker S could be used to perform quality checks on things like door latches, seat belts, and light covers. It also uses obstacle detection to move around the plant and to possibly install precision parts like the company's logo. A lot of training and development still needs to be done, but Ubitech says it's the first bipedal humanoid robot to complete a specific workstation task on a mobile EV production line. 
And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game,